What is up, guys? So, I made a little post on this big ARC 7 page we all are part of, and I said, what are some of the technical questions that you guys would like covered on this YouTube series? So, <clears throat> I realized the last few audio pieces were terrible. Uh, I think I figured out the camera. It was kind of a... Um, I have everything set to manual. Um, so, the manual focuses off just a little bit, and we had the audio coming in without a noise gate and a noise filtering. So that was probably really bad. Whenever I would stop talking, it would kind of like noise gate me nice and hard. So the first thing I'll be covering is uh, probably one of the most important ones. It's remote tuning versus live dyno tuning. And I really want to explain that me personally, when I'm going and tuning a car, all of my tuning is done live. Um, the one exception to that is probably Link. Link is where I'm more likely to do logs on that because there uh, seems like every single client that I've had with Link has a terrible internet connection. That's the main thing. Um, and if I can't have internet while we're driving together while I'm live tuning, um, Logs are really the only way to go for that. Um, it's, it's funny because it's been at least three or four link clients I can think of that had just the worst internet. Unusable. So, street tuning, uh, I always do to where it is me over any desk on your particular software for the ECU. And we'll be going through. Um, before we even start the car, I go through every sensor. I make sure that our it is in, our, everything's correct. Um, everything is matched to your vehicle and your needs. And then when we do our first startup, I'm watching you know, how our enrichments go. I'm watching the whole process of that. Um, and then we're driving the whole thing as if you're driving the car normally. So. My tolerances are really tight because I'm focused in this room, you know, doing pretty much data an analytics, um, going through, seeing a full screen of what's going on with the vehicle at all times. And I'll stop people and say, hey, you know, we're having this problem due to whatever it is. If it's air temp going crazy, if it's a sensor like drive by wire disconnecting every now and then. That actually just happened. So we had a drive-by-wire car. On the dyno, we're getting a drive-by-wire fault. I'm like, what the heck is this? Out of nowhere. And, uh, it's a little bit, it's a, bring me a little better. Um, the drive-by-wire connector seated fine, but the clip wasn't fully seated. So it was jiggling the tiniest amount um, when we were doing our, our tuning. And so every now and then you hit the throttle and it just goes, boom, stops completely. And I'm like, this is dangerous for the motor because we're now 30 pounds of boost. Uh, uh, we've got good apex seals, we've got good fuel, um, a huge intercooler, it's doing its job properly and the tune itself is conservative. Uh, but, you know, something disconnecting while we're driving is very critical. And my job as a calibrator is to diagnose your car for you so it's staying in tip-top shape. That's why I set up engine protection so if you lost um, an oil pump, you know, everything would shut off. If you lost certain particular sensors that are somehow getting disconnected, you hit an engine code and that DTC will shut you down quick. Um, the whole point is, again, we're saving we're using these expensive electronics to save your investment. So that's my remote street tuning. Um, that's how I do it. And I think that's the right way of doing it. Logs are kind of lame. Uh, there's, there's a time and a place to do logs, and that's for diagnostic purposes um, before starting. And for long-term support for a vehicle, because then with a log on a long-term support of a vehicle, I can see, hey, your fuel filter is getting clogged. Your spark plugs are getting fouled. 
whatever it is based on that log. It'll show me right away. Um, now, live dyno tuning, this is another thing. So, in some instances, I will be ported into the dyno, still doing remote from here, and having all the same controls. I have control over the dyno if I need it. I have control over all your engine ECU stuff like I would normally do remote. And then the, uh, the other option is, of course, me flying out to you, which has a little bit more expense to carry because traveling, right? Um, but that's really fun. So I've done it for a few cars out at Rotor Piston Motorsports. I'll be doing it for a few cars out at Performance R&D coming up in the, the month. And I love doing that because now you're getting not only the nice on-the-phone conversation, but you'll hear and see things that the technician or whoever I was on the phone with, most likely the owner, um, might not hear. I'll say like, oh, do you, do you hear that? Like small little, huh, we are actually having an issue. Let's take a look. And so I can break it down better when I'm at the dyno facility um, and just going through the simple stuff. Hey, your catch can's filling up. What did you set these tolerances to? Do we have enough ventilation? So on and so forth. Like I can design the vehicle better if I'm there with it. That's always the case. Um, so live dyno tuning, very much the same as me doing remote dyno tuning, but I just get a little extra edge as to uh, what information I'm able to gather, how I can future-proof the vehicle, um, how I can kind of bring an extra safety factor, or in some cases I can say, because we have this extra safety factor of me being here, we can turn it up higher. Uh, so that's kind of a benefit as well. So uh, it all works out. It's all kind of based on your budget and really what you're aiming to do. Uh, but I would say that I am a person with motion sickness. I'm a person with like, it's expensive to take a flight and to get a housing and to get food all in different places, right? Um, so for me to do as much as I do remote, I think that's a much more beneficial cost or rather value per dollar than, uh, than dyno tuning in person. So I'm saving all this money, unless I have, you know, five plus cars lined up, that's a very expensive thing to do for one person, at least in our level of our industry. Um, that's actually another really good topic is the price point of engine calibration at the high end is, you know, $15,000 per car, $8,000 per car. The minimum I'm seeing from like a higher end engine calibration from a Motec guy is $2,500 a day. So when I'm charging what I charge, this is like a, a massive, massive discount to what we're doing. Um, I'll generally put in about eight hours to build the file for your car. Um, and then we'll go through and evaluate for the first hour or two. And then we go through and set up, you know, as it's warm up and all that stuff. By the time I'm fully invested into it, it's probably about 22 to 27 hours on average per car. Um, you can break that down as, as best as you can, but um, it's not exactly a like tech wage, an engineer wage. Like there's nowhere near that at this uh, at this standard level of uh, of work that we're doing. And I'm trying to add in other features to where it truly feels like a motorsport grade. Uh, so I've got usually I've got uh, boost by gear, uh, fuel by gear. I've got. Uh, if we have EGTs, I'll have a per fuel for rotors. Uh, parametric compensation has to be okay. So this this is actually gonna, another good point. Um, I've seen a few other engine calibrators mention parametric compensation, and then in their fuel model itself, they don't have uh, engine pressure ratio as the 
axes. So their barometric compensation is only doing a little bit or just, I think it's the most basic variant of the fuel model instead of across the entire fuel model. Um, that being, what you really need to do is you have an engine pressure ratio. So it's MAP versus BAP, which is back pressure, or MAP versus EMAP, which is exhaust back pressure. I'm sorry, BAP being parametric, excuse me. Um, and the calibration is built into the fuel model to where it affects every single fuel calculation, uh, not just the main VE table. Uh, it's very similar to how the flex fuel compensation works on some ECUs and how it is only for the fuel model, or if you put it as fuel composition, it is for the entire map. That would be ignition, boost control, uh, and fuel. So everything. Um, so it's interesting seeing a lot of people talk about barometric compensation and then not actually having it doing anything. So that is kind of a, I don't want to say a call out, but it's a, should be realized there's a difference. Um, just like there's a difference with the flex fuel sensor and how you're setting that up. So this is kind of another good insight into what I do for engine calibration um, and the, the remote street tuning versus live dyno tuning or remote dyno tuning, which is kind of a nice middle ground. Regardless of whatever you do, the price is the same. The uh, Any kind of dyno tuning will always see the street afterwards because you don't drive a car on a dyno. And there's no reason to think that a dyno is exactly the same as the street. If you're very lucky, like a lot of cars are in Maryland, that dyno, when that thing, when the car comes off the dyno, we're one to two percent off on the street tuning stuff now. So it is very, very close to real world application. And I can also turn the fan off or down to experience a high heat or uh, high elevation situation or air density is able to cool off the car as good. So I do a lot of things in the dyno to really push a car hard. Uh, stuff like intentionally run it as hot as we can to see where our breaking points are. I can see uh, the worst heat soak possible when I have like a fan off and, you know, maybe something blocking the radiator, maybe something blocking the intercooler, something like that to really push to see. In the worst case scenario, if this person was at Pike's Peak, if they were, you know, Death Valley, something like that, the car would be happy. The car would still be doing its job. Make sure you get your ass home, you're enjoying the drive, whatever it is in our needs. So hopefully that helps. Um, this is probably going to be one of many videos that I do today. So you'll see that I'm changing shirts, uh, changing the lighting a little bit, camera, the audio stuff should be a little better. So Hopefully you guys like this one and uh, catch you next one. Cheers.